I believe in broadening the base, lowering the rates, and stop playing favorites. 47% of Americans don't pay, Americans don't pay any federal income tax. Meanwhile, the best, the best investment you can make as a, as a lobbyist or as a corporation is get a lobbyist to get your own tax exemption like GE. We've, we've created all these loopholes and tax codes that are thousands of pages along. Now, my preference is to get to a consumption tax where we have to fund government, but that should be done equitably across all people in a society. We're all part of this country, and there should not be uh, redistributive taxes anywhere. Uh, so for me, broaden the base, lower the rates, stop playing favorites. That starts with cutting down all the subsidies for, for different industries, picking winners and losers, um, making sure that, uh, that, that everybody is participating uh, in, in the funding of our government. I think if everybody was equally paying, uh, paying equally and having an equal voice and understanding that, uh, that, that they are contributing as well, we would do things differently. But right now, we have a winner and loser taxation system, and it's not right. Article 1, Section 8 gives the Congress the power to create or to coin money, and that power needs to be taken back from the Federal Reserve. Uh, if we eliminated the Federal Reserve or allowed Congress to take back the power to create money, then that would eliminate the tax problem. If you think about it, uh, the power to create money, uh, how could you possibly need any taxes at all if the government has the power to create money? It, it's, people need to understand and connect the dots that if the government is creating money, why would it need to tax you to begin with? So that question, that scenario needs to be solved before we can make any progress in that area. Senator Dorgan has spoke out on the secrecy of the Federal Reserve System. There is no entity in the world that controls our lives more than the Federal Reserve System. What the Federal Reserve Board does, nobody knows what they're doing. Half a trillion dollars and you don't know who got the money? Uh, the loan went to the, the loans go to the central banks. Who actually made that decision to hand out a trillion dollars that way? Half a trillion dollars. Who made that decision? The Federal Open Market Committee. All right. Well, the Constitution says no money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law. This you money think is not drawn from the Treasury. Is it safe to say that nobody in 1913 contemplated that your small little group of people would decide to hand out half a trillion dollars to foreigners? This, this, uh, this particular authority has been used um, numerous times over the years. The authority that Mr. Bernanke is referring to is the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Congressman Charles Lindbergh said the following. This act establishes the most gigantic trust on earth. When the president signs this bill, the invisible government by the monetary power will be legalized. The people may not know it immediately, but the day of reckoning is only a few years removed. The worst legislative crime of the ages is perpetrated by this banking bill. After signing the Federal Reserve Act of 1913, President Woodrow Wilson said, I have unwittingly ruined my country. An elite group of people and the corporations they run have gained control over not just our energy, food supply, education, and health care, but over virtually every aspect of our lives. We have a privately owned central bank system disguised as a government owned system. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. It gives them the ability to print money in a way that the insiders are protected and everybody else is trained. No matter where you go in the world, he who controls the money controls the world. Congressman Paul got me really intrigued with the whole uh, the Federal Reserve and I've spent a substantial amount of time reading about in a, in a subject that I've found to be quite interesting and at the root of a lot of the problems that we have and I thank you for that. Now Abraham Lincoln funded the Civil War and government without taxation and without borrowing. In 1861 Lincoln and his Secretary of Treasury Salmon P. Chase went to New York to apply for the necessary loans. The money changers, anxious to see the union fail, offered loans at 24 to 36 percent interest. Lincoln said thanks, but no thanks, and returned to Washington. 
Lincoln sent for an old friend, Colonel Dick Taylor of Chicago, and put him on the problem of financing the war. During one meeting, Lincoln asked Taylor what he discovered. Taylor put it this way. Why, Lincoln, that is easy. Just get Congress to pass a bill authorizing the printing of full legal tender treasury notes and pay your soldiers with them and go ahead and win your war with them also. So that's exactly what Lincoln did. In 1862-63, he printed up $450 million worth of the new bills. In order to distinguish them from other banknotes in circulation, he printed them in green ink on the back side. That's why the notes were called greenbacks. With this new money, Lincoln paid the troops and bought their supply. During the course of the war, nearly $450 million worth of greenbacks were issued without borrowing and without taxation. This is how he explained his rationale. The government should create, issue, and circulate all the currency and credit needed to satisfy the spending power of the government and the buying power of consumers. The privilege of creating and issuing money is not only the supreme prerogative of government, but it is the government's greatest creative opportunity. By the adoption of these principles, money will cease to be master and become the servant of humanity.